Welcome back everyone, this is GTA Failure. In the last video we tackled Taxi over on Portland and then we flew this Banshee over to Staunton and did more Taxi there. So we're up to 66 consecutive drop-offs with the goal of doing all 100 in a row. Not necessary, but that's the uh, plus achievement that we're after in uh, for this particular um, mission. Uh, I want to uh, point out the time bonus that I built up when I pick up this first patient here on Shoreside. So about five and a half minutes on the clock. And that clock is going to become an issue for me here in this video. Um, so uh, I'm going to play most of this uh, uh, footage in double speed, uh, but uh, we'll play some of it in regular speed. Um, uh, the uh, the trip over here in the tunnel was kind of uh, dicey for me. It was kind of nerve-wracking, actually, because I took a lot of damage, and my Banshee wasn't perfect when I got into the tunnel in the first place. Took a lot of damage, and uh, if this Banshee catches on fire or blows up, then my goal of getting 100 taxi drop-offs in a row goes away. So first thing after picking up a pas uh, passenger is to... Uh, head right in here into the pain spray. I didn't quite make it. I didn't go far enough. And then I got booted into blue hell and I was worried that I had soft locked the game. Uh, but after a couple of agonizing seconds in blue hell, it puts me here and I was totally disoriented. So we're at the end of the loop, kind of at the lower part of the dam. So I don't know why it put me there, um, but I can say that that was a big fat time loss because I got to get all the way back up uh, to where that pain spray was. Um, let's see, so the pain spray is coming up here on the left, and so now finally we're where we were, but like it was like 40 seconds of time loss. The destination was right here. It was super close. So that was on me, uh, but I, I didn't know that the uh, garage door of the pain spray would come down until you were safely inside, far enough inside. So I did make some mistakes as I did taxi here on Shoreside. Uh, so I, I really have hardly any experience doing taxi on Shoreside. Uh, like I mentioned in the last video, when I speedrun this game, I do taxi uh, on Portland exclusively, all 100 fares. And, um, and I did experiment when I was learning to speedrun the game uh, with um, something with, uh, with doing taxi here. Uh, I only uh, used a couple of the destinations that were close by each other. I never came down here to the destinations. There's two of them here in Wichita Gardens. Never been down here before this video. Um, so uh, so this is uh, like a learning experience for me. And, I, and if I had to do it all over again, I would do some things differently. So um, first of all, uh, I got totally lost on my first trip to the apartment buildings here in Wichita Gardens. It's, it's not right now. Well, this is convenient, right? Because I just get to turn around and go right back to where we were. Um, but I, I just, uh, I misread the map, the mini map, uh, and I didn't know exactly where the apartments were. So I did lose some time on, a, on my first trip to the apartments. But in terms of the mistakes that I made, if I had to do it all over again, uh, I would not be so conservative as I try to avoid the Colombian cartel roads. Like in particular, the curvy road is the one that, uh, that I avoided as much as possible during paramedic. So I, I didn't need to be so conservative in terms of avoiding Colombian cartel gangland while I was doing taxi here. And so the cost of being conservative and trying to conserve the health of this Banshee was that uh, some of my trips just took long, uh, longer than they would have if I had kind of taken a more direct route going directly through the Colombian territory. And so you can see, like, we had a five and a half minute cushion. We've already lost two of those minutes. I'm, I'm down to, you know, three and a half minutes plus the, the time that I just got added here for this particular drop off. Uh, and then another thing that I uh, wish I would have done differently is I wish I would have been a little bit more aggressive as I drove around. Uh, definitely don't want to roll this Banshee because that puts an end to the dream of getting 100 taxi drop-offs in a row. But uh, I didn't need to be so aggressive trying to desperately avoid damage, uh, you know, with like other cars and stuff like that. I, I could have been more aggressive with my driving, which would have saved me time. So I guess in a, in a nutshell, is this the one where I get lost? Yeah, this is the one where I get lost. I think it's back here, but it's actually up by our safe house. So another big that time loss. That one's on me. I can't blame Rockstar for that one. Although if they had made a mini map that I could click on, then I would have known where this destination was. So you know what? I'm blaming Rockstar for this one too. Um, okay, so uh, so I guess the you know the summary is that I I should have um, uh, accepted more damage to my vehicle and gained uh, more time because it turned out that uh, time was more of a factor for me than uh, damage to the vehicle. Because unlike the ambulance and paramedic, you can you can spray your um, your taxi or in this case the banshee that I'm using, 
Here I made sure to get fully inside so we don't get pushed down again. Uh, but live and learn. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's talk uh, a little bit about the uh, money issue that was uh, sort of left as an open question at the end of the last video. I, uh, I should have just looked it up ahead of time or figured it out ahead of time before I made the last video, but I didn't, so here's my answer. Um, so when you drop off your uh, fifth passenger in a row, you get a uh, you get the cash from the drop-off, like as normal, and if it's a speed bonus that you deserve, then you'll get that too. But you will also get a uh, multiple of five drop-off. And so dropping off your fifth passenger gets you a bonus $2,000. Dropping off your tenth passenger gets you a bonus $4,000. Dropping off your fifteenth passenger gets you a bonus $6,000. And then $8,000, $10,000, $12,000. Uh, $12,000 is, is the first data point that I actually collected live while I was making the commentary for the video. Um, and uh, yeah, and so that's the uh, that's the pattern. It just goes up by an extra two grand uh, every five drop-offs, every multiple of five. Okay, so um, yeah, so I guess that means. So what does that mean for a hundred thousand? So a hundred thousand would be the twentieth multiple of five. So you get twenty copies of the two thousand dollars. So forty grand bonus for dropping off that hundredth passenger in a row. That's good stuff. Okay, um, so. Uh, let me say that, uh, uh, or reiterate, that I made some mistakes and I, I didn't understand that time was going to be more of a factor for me than damage to my Banshee. But uh, uh, Rockstar made some mistakes too, because the uh, time that they give for, you know, like you, so I'll drop this person off and then I'm going to pick up the next person and I'm going to get, uh, look, only a minute and a half. All right, so this person wants to go to the Northwest Towers and I'm given 30 seconds-ish. I, I, I didn't see the exact numbers. 30 seconds to get to Northwest Towers. Gang, 30 seconds to get from the airport to Northwest Towers. So how did they come up with 30 seconds for that particular, uh, you know, like a departure location and arrival location? I'm assuming they did some kind of a straight line distance calculation. And once they figure out how many feet it is to get over to the destination, they just multiply that by some number of seconds per foot. But that is not a valid way to do it. It, it doesn't take 30 seconds to get here because there's no there's no roads directly connecting. Look, I'm taking shortcuts here and I still lost a bunch of time. I was at a minute and a half before that passenger got in. So I used up all 30 seconds of that passenger's time plus another 45 seconds of my hard earned bonus time. And you can see how aggressive I'm being now, just like flying off of cliffs and trying to take shortcuts and going up ramps just because I can recognize now that uh, that time is the, the biggest factor. So I'm starting to accept that I should take damage and try to save time. Um, so yeah, so Rockstar just screwed this up in the same way that they screwed up the time for um, paramedic uh, when you're doing it on Shoreside Bay. They, they used this probably the same straight line distance formula and maybe the same time multipliers, I don't know, but like it just isn't appropriate given the disconnected nature of the Shoreside map. They could have fixed this. I mentioned this fix for paramedic and I'll mention it again. This would have been very easy to program in instead of the straight line distance. So I think that the time bonuses in uh, Staunton and Portland are fine. They don't need to fix those. But just here on Shoreside, they can't copy the same formulas they did on Staunton and Portland because this map is disconnected. So uh, here is the easy fix that I mentioned for paramedic and it would have uh, fixed uh, taxi here on Shoreside. They could have used a different function entirely, not one based on straight line distance, which is like pretty much irrelevant for a lot of parts of this disconnected map. But they could have just come up with some simple formula like, hey, if the passenger is picked up in Pike Creek and the destination is somewhere in Cochrane, we're going to give 40 seconds. Just that. That's it. Doesn't matter exactly where the pickup is or exactly where the destination is, but anything originating in Pike Creek and ending somewhere in the Cochrane region gets 40 seconds. Pike Creek to Cedar Grove is 50 seconds. Pike Creek to the airport is 60 seconds. Pike Creek to Wichita Gardens, that's this area here, is two minutes. It, you need to have two minutes. Like how did they come up with 30 seconds from the airport to uh, the apartments in Wichita Gardens? So sorry I didn't prepare you for this rant. I, I just started to get really angry as I'm like flying around, uh, you know, Shoreside Vale desperately trying to get to the number 100. I didn't think this would be a hard challenge, but my goodness, the, the programmer's just totally messed up. And now we lost the passenger because I'm going fast. And so we damaged the vehicle too much. So now it's another time lost. Like not only did we spend all that time driving this person and not get credit for the fare, but now I got to spend time getting pay and spray. I'm down to 35 seconds here. Don't even have a patient in the, in the car. 
All right, so 30 seconds, and they give me 25 seconds to get to Wichita Gardens. 25 seconds to get to Wichita Gardens. What are they doing? I was thinking about flying off to the left there on that curvy road and just taking my chances that I'd land on my wheels. But you shouldn't have to, like, take these, like, crazy shortcuts and, like, drive out of control in order to have enough time to get to your destination. Like I believe in challenge, but this is just a flawed design. This is not a challenge. This is just a broken function in terms of the time bonus. Ugh. So we're at 81. I didn't really have a lot of faith with 30 seconds on the clock that I could eke out another 19. Like I, I again, had five and a half minutes when I started here on Shoreside. Now we're down to what, 10 seconds? Even the 10 second bonus is barely enough for it. Like it's not enough, right? Like it takes me more than 10 seconds to get this passenger. So we were down to like seven seconds there and then they give me 30 seconds. Okay, so 30 seconds for Cochrane is doable, but it doesn't allow me to give any kind of a, like, a, like a bank. So like I started the fair at like seven. So then we, we uh, were down to like 27. We've got 10 seconds for dropping them off. Like it just, it's just straight broken. And I think it, it would have been easy to fix. Like, that's the thing. Like, if, if it would have been, like, you know, like, many, many hours of, of programmers and they got to get paid and, like, Rockstar wants to make money, I understand that. But this would have been trivial to fix. And they didn't do it. Okay, so uh, while I uh, drive for my life here trying to get to 100, uh, I'll say that um, uh, I did write down the times that uh, took me to do the 33 fares on each of the islands. So um, 33 fares in Portland Island took me 19 minutes, 43 seconds, just under 20 minutes. Uh, then I didn't count the time that uh, I spent driving from the last drop off in Portland to flying over, like flying my car over the bridge and then, uh, you know, like getting to the next passenger. I didn't count any of that time. So starting from when I picked up my first passenger on Staunton, uh, it took me 21 minutes and 20 seconds to drop off 33 folks in Staunton. Okay, what do we have here? A minute left. Oh, piece of cake. We got this, gang. 20 seconds. Thank you, Rockstar. Thanks so much. I mean, like, it's a close destination, but 20 seconds is, like, the appropriate amount of time when you're, like, pretty good at driving in, uh, whatchamacallit, GTA 3, and you're driving a Banshee. Like, this is another thing. Like, I actually didn't even realize this until right now as I'm making this commentary. I shouldn't be able to get to these places as fast. I shouldn't have as good a top speed or as good handling or as good acceleration. All of these things would have made it so that, like, I would have failed long ago with my, you know, like, quest to get 100 if I were actually doing this with a, a taxi or a cabbie with its worst top speed and handling and acceleration. So, like, I'm, I'm not even able to, like, maintain my time in a banshee. And they want me to do this in a taxi or a cabbie. Now, the fact is, like, these complaints are really because I artificially decided I wanted to do 100 in a row, right? Okay, so this is a killer right here, right? Again, I take a lot of time trying to head towards this person's destination, but I, my car didn't survive. And so I spent all that time. Then I got to spend all this time getting pay and sprayed. Uh, 13 fares left. I can't even get out of this stupid garage. You know what? Shoreside gets a 1 out of 10. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it. But they do. One out of ten for sure. Side the whole island. Um, okay, so um, so as I mentioned, uh, the thirty-three drop-offs in Portland took just under twenty minutes. In Staunton, just over twenty-one minutes, quite comparable. And then here on shore side, now I, I'm going to do thirty-four drop-offs. So I'm just going to tell you the time it took to do the first thirty-three drop-offs. I won't even count the last drop-off, just so it's an apples to apples comparison. Um, 33 drop-offs here in Shoreside was 38 minutes and 9 seconds. 38 minutes and 9 seconds. Again, the other two islands were basically 20 minutes each. It took twice as long, twice as long to do stupid taxi on stupid Shoreside. Which gets a stupid 1 out of 10. Just awful. Alright, so look, I barely make it here with like 1 second on the clock. And then they give me 10 seconds to go find a passenger. Well, yeah, thanks so much. There's no people within a 10 second drive, even in my overpowered Banshee. So like it was over, I knew it was over. I killed my my last passenger there. I don't know what we got in a row, 88, 89. I was just so ticked off. So here I had to decide what to do. Do I want to start over? I've already been recording for like, uh, like I've been playing this game for like an hour, 15 minutes, uh, just driving this Banshee around to different destinations. Do I want to start over? And the answer is no. So we're gonna just give up on the dream. I think it's possible. If I had to do it all over again, like I mentioned, I would drive more aggressively. 
and take more shortcuts and really focus on time here in Shoreside. And also, I would probably start in Shoreside um, because then if I fail uh, somewhere, like maybe I just can't even do 33 normal drop-offs in Shoreside. Uh, like if I fail, then um, uh, something, then I then I just start over in Shoreside and I haven't spent like an hour, 15 minutes. So like I probably uh, redo it in Shoreside um, and uh, hopefully get 33 in a row there with enough time built up on the clock to make the long drive through the tunnel to Staunton after I do my 33 in a row on Shoreside. So I don't think it'd be easy, but I think uh, I think I could do it if I did it again. But I have no plans to, to do it again. So this is convenient. So I didn't get a big time bonus, but I only had to drive like 10 feet, so I like that. That never happens in uh, Portland. I've seen it happen several times in uh, Shoreside, and I saw it happen a couple of times in Staunton, where I got the same destination twice in a row, but I've never seen it in Portland. And I've spent many, many, many more hours doing taxi in Portland than I have on either of the other two islands. Okay, uh, so let's talk about the uh, money that I got for doing... All right, so again, like, do I need to take this? Like, should I have to take that shortcut and pray that I land on my wheels? Come on, Rockstar. Get it together. Okay, uh, so here I am, uh, just trying to get over, you know, taking shortcuts where I can. Uh, again, 10 seconds uh, added to my clock there is not sufficient to find a passenger when I drop somebody off in the park. It takes more than 10 seconds to get out here. And uh, even in double speed, you can probably tell how much slower the, uh, the taxi is than the uh, Banshee was. Okay, so let's talk about uh, money. Uh, so I um, added up the amount of money that I got, you know, like I, I don't... I don't remember how much I got at the end of my 87 or 88 in a row, whatever it was. Um, but I did add up uh, the amount of money I got on my multiple attempts to get 100 cumulatively. Uh, and so altogether, uh, $361,524. Um, you know, it's a good chunk of change. Uh, but if I want to do an early money grind, uh, I think my, my uh, best bet right now is firefighter. Lots of firefighter in Portland. Consecutive. Got to do as many consecutive as you can. Okay, so there was, again, I got two import-export garage destinations back-to-back. -back. Come to think of it, when I was experimenting with uh, doing some taxi on this island during my speedrunning time in this game, uh, the only duplicate destination I got was that same import-export garage. So I wonder if it's some specific glitch uh, for that destination only. I don't think I've gotten any duplicates of any other destinations besides import-export garage. Okay. So what do we have here? 52 seconds. So there, we got a lot of time. Cochran Dam, I don't know, like a, two minutes or maybe like a minute and a half. Like that's that's probably sufficient. But like the like because I'm a far straight line distance from Cochran Dam. Oh my goodness, gang. Sorry to, to continue to hit this same point over and over again, but it's just it's just straight broken, straight broken. Okay, so while we wrap up and uh, head towards our exciting conclusion of the uh, hundred cumulative taxi drop-offs. There we go. Right, so then on, in that drop-off, like the time they gave me was about 30 seconds more than it actually took me to get there. So that's helpful because then I can start to build up a bank of time. But some of the destinations, in particular, just Wichita Gardens, just seems like the, the formula that they have is not appropriate. Okay, so just a few left. Uh, and so I'll mention the other reward finishing uh, 100 drop-offs cumulatively is uh, you get a, a special vehicle, the Borg 9, which is a, uh, which looks like a cabbie, which is like this kind of more rounded one, uh, but it's got a special color and some special features on it, which is pretty cool. So um, I will read to you uh, the uh, message we're going to get on our beeper once we've completed our 100th drop-off. We'll see it in the top left in just a couple of minutes. But uh, the message will say, bigger, faster, harder, new Borg 9 taxis open for business in Harwood. So that's in the northern part of Portland Island. Call 555-BORG-9 today. Uh, and uh, that's the indication that you have completed your 100. So uh, to Rockstar's credit, I appreciate that they don't make a guess. Like you don't have to sit here keeping track of how many you've done or um, something or check the stats menu to figure out how many passengers you've dropped off. Uh, they do let you know once you've gotten 100. So that's good. Um, like they didn't do that for firefighters. So I appreciate that they did it here. Okay. Uh, so again, you can see me driving more aggressively and driving through, um, like basically taking the shortest uh, time path that I can and not trying to avoid this curvy road like I was for most of the, my time in Shoreside. All right. Uh, so uh, the Borg Dine, we'll see it uh, later in this video once I successfully get my 100th cumulatively, but uh, 
reading from the wiki, uh, the Borg 9 is a modified cabby with bloody spikes on the front and rear bumpers. It spawns in a dark red primary color for the body and a gray secondary color for the bumpers. Uh, okay, um, so I see the destination here is the park. And I couldn't remember if this next drop off is 99 or 100. I, I wasn't paying attention. I was kind of like pretty angry when I, I failed to get my 100 in a row. So I didn't pay attention to how many I uh, drop offs I had. I was hoping this was number 100 because I had an idea. As soon as um, I saw the park as my destination, I thought, oh my goodness, this would be perfect if this was number 100. That's me killing a Colombian cartel member, not out of anger, but as self defense, preemptive self defense. Um, okay, so the park is, uh, you know, like at sea level, and I'm quite a bit higher. Uh, I've got a higher elevation right here, and uh, there's a, an off-road mission coming up that we're going to do that's right around this area here that we're driving into, this grassy area. And so I know that if I just kind of fly my cab, uh, like off the hill here, that the park is down below. But I, I couldn't quite get a good angle. I had lots of time, so I kind of like took my time with this. Um, but I also know that there's water down there. And not only uh, like does going in the water kill me, which is like annoying and like I don't want any official deaths in this official save file, but then I have to redo taxi, right? Because I haven't saved. Uh, that's my bad. Okay, so here we are landing there. I was hopeful that would be 100. It was actually 99, so I was kind of irritated, but I thought that would have been a cool ending to like uh, fall and potentially on, on the roof of the, the cabbie. Uh, land perfectly in that uh, that last blue marker for the hundredth. Didn't quite get there. Take a look at the time here. We're going to pick up passenger number 100. 40 seconds, 39 seconds, 38 seconds. How much of a bonus are we going to get, Rockstar? 35 seconds. None. I'm trying to get to the hospital in Pike Creek, and they give me no time. What is that? Like, what is that? Like, I like that must be a glitch, right? Like, I think that their time uh, function is just straight broken. Um, but I think that that was just a glitch, which I don't know if I've seen before. Um, like I just kind of like sit here for a while, like what, what do I do? So I just ended taxi, no chance to get there, even with shortcuts. Okay. So this one, uh, we get, uh, probably barely enough time to get to the airport in Wichita gardens. I decide we're going to, we're going to do my hundredth fare right. And we're going to try to give you some fireworks as we go out on this, uh, crazy long taxi video. So this is a unique jump. We've seen it. Um, I was concerned I was going to fall in the water. I should have saved again. Like I haven't saved. If I fall in the water, I have to redo those 99 drop-offs plus one more. Um, and the taxi is super slow and the cabby is super slow. So I, I um, wasn't even sure I'd be able to get uh, over the water, but we got there. I probably was tilted a little bit, as you can tell. Uh, okay, so let's pick up passenger 100 again. All right, uh, Northwest Towers, 44 seconds. How, like how? It's not possible to get there on roads from where I am in 44 seconds. It's just not, it's not. I know I keep beating a dead horse here, but seriously, like how do they not test this? How do they not test it, right? Like just have to try it and you see there's not enough time to do these destinations. And the penalty isn't huge. This is another unique jump. And again, silly for me to be flirting with water and potentially landing in water, uh, which would mean I'd have to redo all hour and a half of this, uh, this playthrough. Um, but I thought it was the only way to get there in time. And still, even then, I wasn't sure I'd be able to get there in time. So I take this shortcut up the grass. Like this isn't what you should have to do to get to the destination on time. Two seconds, one second for the win, negative. Freaking rock star. My goodness. Uh, all right. Uh, so I promise I am going to get the hundredth one, um, but, but rock star is, uh, is not doing me any favors here. Uh, so um, I forget what I was saying. I'm, I'm tilted now again. Okay. So uh, once we get our hundredth one, um, we will uh, get that special taxi uh, reward and it will appear at uh, the northern part of uh, short, uh, Portland Island, and uh, I'll show you that um, special cabbie uh, in this video uh, after I get my hundredth. Uh, coming back to the uh, wiki, uh, it says that uh, you get that uh, special uh, cabbie reward after 100 taxi fares in GTA 3. Here's the message in the top left I was telling you about. And uh, in GTA Advance, is the other game with the Borg 9 special taxi, uh, you get it after completing 50 taxi fares, and it shows up at the hideout in uh, red light um, in GTA Advance. Okay, so uh, again from the wiki, 
Um, uh, it says here the bloody spikes. So there's bloody spikes on the uh, front and rear bumpers of the uh, board nine. We'll see it. So here, finally, I save, like locking in my hundred. I, I should have saved after I, I, you know, had my first fail after like eighty the uh, taxi pairs. But anyway, we've saved. We're good to go. Uh, so. Um, so uh, coming back to the wiki, uh, it says the uh, bloody spikes are probably a reference to the 1997 game Armageddon. And then also from the wiki, uh, the Borgnine's name is an homage to the actor Ernest Borgnine, who starred in the 1981 movie Escape from New York as a cab driver named Cabby in a prison converted Manhattan. In the movie, uh, Cabby, that's uh, Ernest Borgnine's character, also drives a checker marathon from which the Cabby and Borgnine are based. So we're going to see that on the sides, uh, left and right sides of this particular special uh, Cabby, uh, there's a, a black and white checkerboard pattern. It looks pretty cool. Uh, and then again from the wiki, the Borgnine's bumpers are perhaps a nod to Cabby's uh, hazardous profession in the crime infested prison. So again, uh, Cabby is the name of Ernest Borgnine's character. Okay, so let's head over to the, uh, whatchamacallit, the Borg 9 in uh, Portland. So I decided to fly there, uh, just uh, trying to show off all these different ways to get between the islands at this early point in the game. Uh, I was actually hoping to try to land my Dodo, like, from right next to the Borg 9. Like, it's sitting there right now for us. Now, my control of the Dodo is uh, quite limited, shall we say? You've, you've seen that in many videos. So we're going to do our best to land, uh, like, right in the, it's a small parking lot. I've actually never like thought about landing in there before, so I didn't know like what the best path was. I wasn't even sure I'd recognize it. Like, where is it exactly? I'm trying to like find my way while I'm in flight, and trying to decide when do I start feathering the landing. You know, like uh, holding the nine button to get my dodo to angle upwards. So it's still not in sight, but it's uh, just coming up here around this corner, and then straight down. And I hit the wall of the parking lot, but didn't quite get there. I think I was maybe like I don't know five feet too far south. Almost had it, almost had it. I should remake this video and, and redo the gameplay so I could land perfectly in there. Okay, so just showing you the Borg 9 Taxi's sign. Uh, so the Borg 9 Taxi, apparently uh, this company has a different telephone number in the definitive edition of this game. So here we are, it's the Borg 9 uh, with the uh, bloody cone thing sticking out the front and rear buffers and the checkerboard pattern. Okay, so I'm not going to do any more taxi drop-offs, but I just want to pick up somebody and, and take them near the destination. I don't want to exceed. I'm quite happy to have the, the exactly 100 um, passengers dropped off in my stats, so I aim to keep it that way. But I will point out that the taxi, uh, sorry, the Borg 9 has a much better uh, top speed and acceleration and handling than uh, the uh, cabbie or taxi. So it's a nice reward. Like, I wish I could do all 100 drop-offs in this thing, but, like, what's the point of giving me this, like, I kind of like the car, and I like that it handles way better than the uh, taxi and the cabbie. But what's the point? I, like, I have no, there's no need to do a single drop-off more uh, in taxi by the time I've earned this reward. Anyway, so it uh, spawns, you know, infinitely. You just have to get a little bit far away, and you get it. So there we go, two Borg Nines right next to each other, and 100 drop-offs in uh, Taxi Driver. So uh, thanks for sticking around. I know this was a long video. But uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you real soon.